I was having dinner with my parents the other day and we were talking about how environmental friendly the economy of socialist Romania used to be. People were dirt poor, not because they didn't have money, but because there was nothing to buy. And the government was also rationing things like meat and gas. It was uh, they, they didn't call it carbon credits, but you still had the ration card. And I was asking my parents, like, why did people put up with this? And it wasn't like a natural calamity fell upon Romania. The government just decided to put everything for exports. So we were taking the stuff that we were making and giving it to foreigners, while the internal consumption was abysmal and the stores were empty as a result. So my question was like, why didn't people revolt against the government in that situation? Why didn't they rebel? And the answer is that the change happened very gradually. It first started with non-essential items like uh, oil. I mean, you can cook without oil, right? Is the argument that was being used. And then it moved to butter and, you know, a couple of other things that you didn't need. And over the course of years, the stores became empty. So people were used to the psychology of dealing without having certain things and without being able to buy certain things. And I don't find it surprising that many people are drawing some parallels to Germany right now. Because on the far left extremist platform, which is Twitter, you have people assuring you that the problem isn't going to get worse, that in fact there might not even be a problem at all. But as time passes, instead of things getting better, they're becoming worse. Uh, so now, as you can see, there is an article suggesting that uh, pasta and flour is being sold only one per person because there's a shortage of it as well. And there's been months and there still doesn't appear to be any solution to the oil problem. So now you have people in the chat, you know, on, on Twitter saying that, oh, well, you don't need these things to cook. I mean, you, you can live without them, just use other methods. But what I found very interesting is this particular mindset. Germany is doing this because they have a new modern green government that knows that past consumption patterns of people are not sustainable. Germany again sets an example for the world that less is more. A new modern socialism is built here and that will avoid the climate catastrophe. Now, I don't know whether or not this is a troll, but I can definitely guarantee to you that I know people who legitimately believe that, and ironically, and they vote for that type of policy. In other words, when the stores are empty, everyone is hungry, people are miserable, but that's a good thing because, as the young lads like to call it, it's sustainable. So let's talk a little bit about sustainability, because it's a word that's being thrown around quite a lot recently. In the past, in order to justify for government atrocities and in order to justify for fascism, people used the word equality. So in other words, we need the government to micromanage and control every aspect of people's lives in order to achieve this utopian equality that they were talking about. Now, people use a different term. They're more modern. They use sustainability. So it's the same concept, like the government needs to micromanage everything, control every aspect of human life in order to achieve this mythical sustainability. The reason I find sustainability interesting is that it has been used in the past. You see, unfortunately, a lot of people know that Nazis are bad, but they can't articulate why they are bad outside of what is said in pop culture. In other words, most people don't actually read the history books. If you do read the history books, you'll find that one of the causes for World War II was the belief in the shrinking market theory. Now, what this theory suggests is that Germany relies on Eastern Europe for food. So they're taking from Poland, from Ukraine, from Romania, they're, they're taking grains, they're taking meat, and in return, they are providing Eastern Europe with manufactured goods, such as cars, furniture, so on and so forth. But the shrinking market theory suggests that this is a market which is constantly shrinking because as the trade keeps going on, Eastern Europe starts developing, they start building their own factories and they start learning how to manufacture their own goods. Their own population is going to increase and then they will need more food for them and they're not going to send food for Germany. So in other words, one of the reasons for World War II, which is not mentioned in pop culture, is also a fight for resources. Right? Like they, they wanted to take over Eastern Europe, they wanted to take over Poland, 
so that they can drain the resources, the natural resources from pollen, because they believe that there is not enough sustainability for the German people. As time goes on, there's just going to be less food coming in, so they're going to take pollen in order to drain the food from that, okay? So, that was literally the same ideology which is being used now, and this ideology fails to take into account the fact that when humans have a need, they also invent, they, they also come up with new technology. So, if you look at the, the time period between World War I and World War II and the way they were doing farming then, you will notice that on the same plot of land with the technology we have today, you can just farm more, you can just produce more. So like this idea that we can look back into the past and we can see, all right, well, the system that's being used is not sustainable, so therefore we need to uh, do something drastic, whether in the case of Hitler invade a foreign nation or in the case of uh, modern thinking, it's like we need to allow the government to control everything, fails to take into account the fact that new technology can come up, which avoids the problem that exists. Now, of course, the people in power, the politicians, the, the big corporations, the bankers, if you tell them that the solution for a problem is for them to have more power and more control, of course, they're going to want that solution. In fact, they're probably going to suggest that solution for any single problem that exists. Which is why you notice that regardless of the problem now, real or imaginable, the same solution is being provided. More power to the government. Oh, you got a pandemic? We need to give more power to the government. Oh, there are shortages of food? We need more power to the government. Oh, there's no sustainability? We need more power to the government. And you even have people that legitimately think that this is the solution. Right? Like, they would argue for this. Like, they would fight you for it. It's like, no, like, they disagree with you, right? I'm pretty sure this gentleman is not a member of the political class. I'm pretty sure he's not a banker. But he's a foot soldier. Like, he, he legitimately believes the ideology. He, he is going to look at an empty supermarket with people that are hungry, and he is going to say that that is a good thing because that's sustainable. It's pretty similar to how Bernie Sanders in the United States pointed out to bread lines and he said well that's a good thing it's a good thing to have bread lines because people have bread in other words what he was saying is that it's a good thing because it's sustainable right like people being hungry is sustainable <laughs> so they are happy with lowering the lifestyle of the average person now what's interesting is that i'm pretty sure that if you look at the german politicians i am willing to bet that they still have cooking oil i am willing to bet that they still are able to have enough pasta and flour. It's the average people that are not going to have pasta and flour, because this is exactly what happened behind the Berlin Wall. The average citizens, they didn't have a lot. The snitches, the collaborators, they did. The people in power did. The secret police did. But the average individual didn't. So we'll see. I'll be monitoring this closely. I'm really curious to see if the situation is getting worse. But what, what really fascinates me is the mindset of the people like I, i'm curious if at one point people will say okay well this is unacceptable we need to start asking the politicians for answers we need to look for uh people that come up with solutions because we don't like living like this or will the mindset that this is okay because it's sustainable accelerate and you're going to see the same people that advocate that other nations have to live like this as well like, I'm pretty sure that this individual right here who, who talks about the, that this is sustainable would make the argument that America, United States, you need to adopt the same lifestyle. Like, this is good. This is, this is a great thing. Less is more, right? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, and I'll see you all there. Take care.